Okay, so I've got something really simple for you. Follow along, are you ready? One plus one plus one equals, that's right, it equals three. Now, why are we talking about math? And I know school hasn't started yet, but I wanna to talk to you about something that simple because see, to get to three, you have to have one plus one plus one. Yeah, you can have two plus one, you can maybe have some subtraction and this and that, but really, to get to a greater number, you have to start somewhere. You have to start at number one, and you move your way to number two, and then you get to number three. See, there's always a before. And this week, we are talking about things that happened before. Now, how many of you brush your teeth before you go to bed? Or you take a shower before you go to school or go about your day? Or you tie your shoes before you go running out into them? Or maybe you put your socks on before you put on your shoes? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What do we need to do before we go out and do things? And I have a challenge for you. And as we've been talking the last few weeks, I encourage you to put on some different glasses. Put on some glasses and look at some things differently. Because I have been looking at some of these same things that we've been talking about in the Bible, and I'm able to look at them differently by adjusting my focus, looking a little bit closer. So I encourage you all to put on your glasses, whether they're real or imaginary, and let's look at how we can learn about doing some things before we do others. So as today we're talking about before and things that we do before. You know, we talked about brushing our teeth and whether we put on our socks or you comb your hair. You know, you gotta make sure maybe you eat breakfast before you might wanna eat dinner or before you do anything like that. A lot of things we do before. Now, we want to talk about today about a book of the Bible, 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, we actually talked about chapter 16 last week. We're actually gonna be talking about that in the next chapter 1 Samuel 17. Now again, I want you to get your glasses on, get a refocus, because what I'm gonna to talk to you about is something you might have heard, but have you ever thought about it this way? I wanna to talk to you about 1 Samuel 17 that talks about the story of David and Goliath. Hold up, wait. That's right, wait. You need to check things out, you need to see things differently, because what I wanna ask you about it is a little bit different, is what about before that? You know, like rewind. Okay, I want you to rewind and go back to what has happened before that. So you might know about David and Goliath. David goes there, he gets a rock, puts in a slingshot, hits the giant, Goliath falls down, and the Israelites win. But there's more to it. See, what was David doing before that time? Before that time, has he ever used a slingshot before? Before that time, has he ever fought someone who was much bigger than him and everyone thought would probably just beat him? Before that time, did he ever have to care for anyone and manage anything? See, a lot of things happened before that time. And just like what we're talking about today is before. Before David faced the giant and what happened there is there was a lot more that happened. Let's dig a little bit deeper and go inside before what happened with David. Now, does everyone have their glasses on or a different view of things? We're gonna be looking in the Bible at 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. And it tells the story of David and Goliath. What was he doing before? Let's read. So as we look in there, we know that David was sent to see his brothers, the three brothers actually that were brought before Samuel and said, hey, this should be the king. Remember that guy? You know, so he said, why don't you go bring them some food, go see them, see what's going on, make sure you talk to the captain of what's going on, say, hey, how's my guys doing? So he did what his dad said. Interesting, he obeyed those that were put in authority over him. And he went there and that's when he heard and saw that Goliath was doing this for 40 days. See, back then they would do things a little bit differently. Like they don't have aircraft carriers and planes and all this other stuff. They actually would have representatives of the army fight. So when I got all my people, you got all your people, I'm gonna stand over here, you're gonna stand over there. Okay, you pick somebody, I'm gonna pick somebody. And this is our biggest, baddest dude or duet. 
and you bring out your biggest, baddest dude or duet, and we're gonna see who wins. And whoever loses, well, then the whole army loses, and that's how they did things. So that's why it went on like that. If you're ever wondering, like, why wouldn't they all just go get him? I mean, yeah, like, he's a big dude, but wouldn't you just send, like, 100 guys, and they would just go get him? Well, that, that's why. So, Goliath was there. He's doing his thing and saying, ha, 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 look at me. I'm Goliath. You people can't do anything. So, David goes, um, yeah, so what happens if I'm able to do this and everything else? So, he's like, yeah, I'm doing it. But what's interesting, and here's what I want you to look at, is 1 Samuel, verse 17. 1 Samuel 17. And he said this in verse 34. As David said to the king, I have been taking care of my father's sheep. Sometimes a lion or a bear would come and carry a sheep off from the flock. Then I would go after it and hit it. I would save the sheep it was carrying in its mouth. If it turned around to attack me, I'd grab a hold of its hair, I'd strike it down. In fact, I've killed both a lion and a bear. I'll do the same thing to this Philistine. Now, do you notice that before he was put in that situation that he was able to accomplish things by beating a lion and a bear? Have you seen how big lions and bears are? Well, he was able to do that before. Before he did that, he was able to do that with lions and bears. So then Saul said to him, okay, go, here's some armor, here you could do that. And what does he say? He says, I can't go out there in all this armor. I'm not used to it. So he took it off. So David took his wooden staff and he took stones and his slingshot. That's it. See, the reason he wasn't used to it is because before he was in battle, he would only battle with his staff and his slingshot. See, he was used to what he was doing before. But yet what also he's done before, as we continue to read on, is that Goliath says, what? You come at me with a stick? Do you think I am only a dog? <laughs> well, David said to Goliath in verse 45, you fight against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I am coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He is the God of the army of Israel. He is the one you have dared to fight against. Now, before David fought against Goliath, before David threw a stone, before any of that happened, what did he say right there in that verse? Let's read it again. He is the God of the army of Israel. He is the one you have dared to fight against. That he declared that it's not me. I ain't doing this. I'm just being used by him. That it was God who was helping him fight that battle. So before he was put in this position, he's learned how to do things. He's learned how to do things. There's always steps. There's always things that we do before. So as many of you want to fight the Goliaths in our lives and we want to do this and I can do it, yeah! Well, what are we doing before? If we were to face a giant right now, well, could we stand back and say, you know what? Before this time, I've been faithful and how I trust God. Before this time, I've been faithful and how I have my confidence in Him. Before this time, I've been faithful because I have been training and put in a position where I could use what I have learned to help me. And most importantly, this isn't me that's fighting this battle. It's God, and I am trusting in Him, and I want God to use the gifts that He's given me to glorify Him. See, I think a lot of us want to fight giants. A lot of us want to do so many things out there, but yet we're not willing to do the work before. You know, if you look, and sports is a great example, Patrick Mahomes, before he was Patrick Mahomes, the highest paid athlete on the Chiefs in the NFL, he was a kid who would go out and go practice. He was a kid who would go out and throw and throw. He was a kid who would go out and call his teammates and they'd go out to a local high school and throw the ball around. He didn't automatically just become a person like that. But what Patrick is, is he's always looking for a little extra things to do. Getting extra board work, he's getting extra footwork drills done, he's getting extra throwing drills. 
you know, whether it's extra PT or he wants to do extra conditioning, you know, he's trying to do everything that he possibly can to put himself in that position. A lot of us want to get to this place and do this, but we're not willing to do the work that makes it happen before. And I'll admit that I've tried to do things on my own because I want to get there and I'm not willing to do what's before and here's what happens. I'm going and I'm going and I got this, yes, I got this. Where are you all at? But, and all of a sudden I get worn down because see, I've relied on my own strength. I relied on my own abilities. I've relied on my own sight and my own path of where to go instead of realizing that, hold on, before I do anything, before I go anywhere, before I plan on doing anything, what does God say? How can I look to him? You know, when the Bible says the ways of a man are right in his own eyes, but the Lord directs their steps. So is God directing your steps? Is God directing what you do before you go into things? I think what we can learn from David and Goliath in this new perspective with our glasses on is that things have been done before. That wasn't his first time slinging a slingshot and it wasn't his first time with a rock in there. No, he was steady in the things he's done before. So how can we use the gifts that God has given us so that we could be in a position to use those before that giant or that opportunity comes before us?